All right. Today we're going to be talking about moss. Uh, I've just had a recent fascination with them uh, because of how little is really known about them, but also the stuff we do know about them is pretty mind-blowing. It's cool stuff. So let's just get right to it. Basically, it's 450 million years ago is when this started with the ebb and flow of the tides. Opportunistic algae had left the seas and the ocean and began to colonize on dry land. They gradually adapted and evolved to become the mosses that we know today. And as they spread, they produced soil on the planet's volcanic base. These are the very first plants, terrestrial plants, and were one of the main sources of oxygen in the atmosphere. As they spread, they enabled other forms of life to spread and thrive as well. And mosses have colonized nearly every surface of the earth. Research has shown that they can still go through photosynthesis from 5 degrees Fahrenheit to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So they can resist dramatic climate changes and go decades without water. They go into this kind of suspended animation and when they do this this sleep-like state they they start dehydrating and they start shriveling up on itself to such an extreme degree but they're still protecting the living cells at the summit of this plant as as soon as it rains it triggers that resuscitation and even in just a few hours it can revive and continue its growth it's just amazing so we kind of owe it to the mosses. They were the first plants. They produced the oxygen. They enabled all the other plants to grow. They have between 15,000 to 25,000 different species. They're the second most diverse uh, plant species. Flowering plants, angiosperms, they have upwards of 350,000 species. Without even having roots or a root system or a vascular system they're taking nutrients from the air and depositing them into soil stabilizing and protecting and improving the soil they're absorbing all this water and then they slowly release it and it, and it's beneficial to trees around their bases because they can protect the tree roots by shading and insulating the soil from the high temperatures so trees love moss. And in the Arctic, it's serving that same purpose. It's keeping it cooler for longer. Uh, the, the moss is preventing that warmth of the sun from reaching the immediate ground. They're, they're utilizing it. And they're reducing the speed at which the ice thaws. So that's good. Um, yeah, just, I just love how these bryophytes live intertwined with each other. Um, some of different species all mixed in together here and there's others of just all the same kind they make up just this one kind of homogeneous carpet and there's carpet moss so they they play such a vital role in our environment and creating new environments and developing new ecosystems and ones who have just gone through some kind of disaster um, you know fires or you know they've just been deforested all, all, for all these reasons, you know, they come in and they stabilize the soil surface. When it rains, they'll retain the rainwater and they'll, they'll be there. They'll help new plants to come in and grow and flourish. It's been the bryophytes all along that have been keeping this earth green, building it back up, and have been the foundation of it all. What you're seeing here are uh, spores. That's how they reproduce through spores, um, through, through the air or through when, when insects come through or when it rains. When, the, when an egg is fertilized, uh, that's when it's produced and then it's spread into the surrounding environment. What's so intriguing is where you can find them. You know, f from, from deserts to snow-capped mountains, you know, from the equator to Antarctica and hopefully after this video 
you'll start noticing them and start appreciating them more um, and realize that more is going to be done with these plants. In fact, uh, an interesting article that I read was because of what had happened in Hiroshima and the nuclear accident in Fukushima, research had to start being conducted on the impact of that on living beings and living organisms, including mosses. And what they found was that moss not only are capable of accumulating radioactive elements, you know, such as cesium, but also a wide variety of other metals and, and weren't even affected. So that, that was amazing. Mosses are not even impacted by radiation. What else can we learn? I can't wait to find out. So stay tuned. I, I love sharing my interest, excitement, and enthusiasm for nature and all these topics with you guys. So till next time.